I have spent over 25 years, let me rephrase that, I've invested 25 years of my life in asking the same question again and again and again. It's probably the same question most of you guys have asked yourself. Why is it some people make it and so many don't? What is the thread? How do we get from where we are to where we want to be? Why do we get stuck? You ever been in those situations where you're just like, how did I arrive here? We arrive at the sum total of the decisions we make. And that's unfortunate, but that's usually how it goes. Now, there are those situations that happen in life when things happen to us that we are a victim, and I don't want to make light of that because those are very serious conditions. But for most of us, what happens in life is we arrive exactly where we're supposed to. And so I believe that one of the things we've got to have breakthrough in our life is we have got to come to a place where we were born to invade the impossible. If you look at us as a species, we've been constantly been doing this. We've been attacking this world for years and years. And I don't care if it's from the flat world concept and someone looking out going, this can't be. It can't be a big waterfall out there. It can't be a, a beach on the other side of the ocean and it's just flat. There's got to be something different. And not only do we determine that it wasn't flat, but then we had to go see every bit of it. And then we found the other side, we had to get on land and we had to cross it and tangle it and on and on and on. I was at a U2 concert in Sweden a year or so ago, and I hear Bono talk about the potential of the first HIV-free generation being born in Africa. I, I, I can remember in the era when that was such a pandemic, such a problem, that it seemed like as though it might wipe out that entire continent. And now we're talking about babies being able to be born without this virus being passed by their parents. Mandela said, everything's impossible until somebody proves it not so. And so I guess the question that we have to grind on is, where's our world flat? And why do we insist on convincing everybody that it's flat? Why do we get stuck? Why do we re-grind on these subjects again and again and again and get stuck? It's like, for some reason, we have to convince everyone around us that we're a victim and the world is flat, our problem's real, and we can't do anything about it. And you know what? We're arguing to lose. And I don't really understand that, but I get it because it's scary to dream. It's scary to get your hopes up. It's scary to confess that you're going to do great things because everybody around you seems to really enjoy clapping at your failure. It seems as though one of the most difficult things in the world to ever do is to forgive yourself. Am I right? We live in this world of shame where guilt has manifested in such a way that we go from doing something bad to thinking that we are something bad. And that is such a travesty because it's just not true. But here's the problem with shame. You've got two issues. One, if you've been in that situation, and I have in my life, it was the crash between what I knew was right and what I did. And we argue with that, like, how could I possibly make that choice? <clears throat> how could I possibly go down that road? Well, I know this, and I do this. That's the travesty, isn't it? But the awakening is on the other side of when you realize that wasn't me. That was a series of bad decisions, and I'm not a bad decision. And I've got to find a way to break free from that. The other problem with shame is it seems as though a lot of people around us don't want to see us get over it. It seems as though there's a lot of people that feel it's their duty to punish the shame. I saw um, a little video the other day of a um, high school class that was doing one of these uh, protests when they lay on the grass and, and they have 17 minutes of silence of doing nothing. And this young girl with a tremendous amount of courage got up there and said, I know the reason most of you are here is because you'd rather lay on the grass than be in class. But let's be honest. What do we really need to do is we need to take this 17 minutes and go love on that person you're bullying. What you need to do is go say sorry to the person you've hurt. What you need to go say is I forgive you for what's happened here. What we need to do is learn to reconnect and find that love that's been broken down because if you look at what most people do when they're hurting is they hurt others. And that seems to be a problem. We all know that hurting people hurt people. So how do we fix this problem of shame and condemnation? 
It's how about a little bit of love? How about less segmentation? How about less judgment? How about less putting people, less people, putting people in a box that they're this person or that person? Well, I agree with them, but I don't agree with them. Why can't we say it's okay to be different? And I say we can. We're all going to go through these five stages of life. Most people think there's three, but there's five. We go from survival to stability to success, and most people stop right there. And the reason they stopped there is because they never knew there were two more levels of life. And I want to open up your mind to it. I'm sure most of you already know about this, but I'm going to spend just a few minutes digging in. That when we're in survival mode, and that could be as a child, as a teenager, or for me as a 48-year-old man having a heart attack, or just after going through a shameful divorce and realizing I may have just messed up my kids for life, and wondering, what am I going to do now? Do I just, just fold it in? Just, that's it? When the doctor says a third of your heart is unrepairable and you're never going to be an active adult, you'll live, but at what level? What are you going to do? Well, here's what you got to do when you're in survival mode. you got to go to work on you. I don't think there's a person here that doesn't know that, but are we doing it? Are you reading every single day? Are you listening to an audio every single day? John Maxwell says you should have a learning lunch every single month. Sit down with someone that you admire, that you love, that you respect, and let them pour into you. <clears throat> and ask them some questions and find out what you need to do to change your life. Get some perspective. But go to work on you. And if I were to say that I'm proud of a few things in my life without sounding arrogant, I would say I'm proud of the fact that I have managed my time to listen and study every single day for at least 30 years. And I believe the only reason they've been able to overcome some embarrassment and some shame and some failure and create some dynamic success is because I've been willing to go inside and look at those issues and get right with me. I believe our income in life, our impact in life is based upon our ability to impact other people's lives. We have to be able to add value. And it's a bit difficult to add value when we don't feel valuable. We can't add value without value. Now, maybe you could, and maybe we could argue that splitting a few hairs, but I would like to challenge you to increase your value, your equity, your personal asset by going to work on you and begin to have conversations yourself about that you're good, you're worthy, you're able, you're capable, you're willing, that all things are possible. You don't have to stay in survival mode. And I believe if you want to go from survival to stability, here's the key. You need to surround yourself with some, with some people that are going to challenge you, and they are going to love you. you got to get a crew. you got to get a posse. They say that when buffalo are facing great storms that's come this way, three, four, five, six, whatever, they just pile in, and they nose in. And they let it come right at them, but together, no one can conquer them. You talk about soldiers when they're in combat. They go back to back, don't they? Because you got my six. Do you have someone in your life that has your six? Do you have someone that's got your back and you got theirs? Can they count on you and do you count on them? Or are you still trying to play solo? They say that if a lion and a tiger fight, the tiger always wins. But if five lions fight five tigers, the lions always win. Why? Because the lions form a pride, and the tigers have pride. The tigers are independent, and the lions come together as a pack. And together, we can accomplish so much more. But that's being vulnerable, isn't it? That's being willing to sit down and have that radical transparency saying, this is what's going on inside of me. This is where it hurts. This is where I've failed. This is where I've let myself down. And I want to get back up. I don't want to walk forwards looking backwards, tripping over my future. I want to make some adjustments. Will you help me? When's the last time you honestly said, will you help me? We get stuck in this world. So stability happens when we begin to form a group around us so that when we're weak, they're strong. And when they're weak, we're strong. And we get a bond together. We start doing something. And then at that point, you can begin to reach out. You move into that level of success. The level of success is when you start feeling like, There's something's happening here. Oh, I got some money, I, I, I got a house, I got a car. I'm going to tell you this much. This might be 
the most disappointing season of your life. And yet for most people, it seems to be their ultimate goal. What can I have? What can I get? What can I show? Woo! Look at me. All of me loves all of me. (laughs) And it's devastating because it's lonely. Because the only way you get through success is you got to move towards the fourth level, and that is significance. You've got to get to a point in your life where it's not about you, it's about the people around you. It's learning how to play for that brother, that a brother was born for the moment of adversity. And all too often, sadly enough, adversity, the brother's alone. Because people run and hide because I don't want to associate with the leper because they might think I'm the same way. What they might think is you're a freaking hero because you're coming next to that broken man and that broken woman and loving on them and healing them and picking them back up to help somebody else. You want to be a hero? Go to the broken and love on them and encourage them to be strong again because there's no way we fix any of our problems from a position of weakness. There's no way we go out and make an impact in the world from a position of failure and I'm not worthy and I can't. So why is the world so interested in beating down the failure? Why? Why is that such a big thing? I think maybe it makes us feel big and strong because we put someone else down, but in reality, you're not stronger because you made someone smaller. You're stronger because you lifted somebody else. If you're in a position of authority or a position of impact, then reach down and grab them and pull them and be part of that healing power in our life because that's what we need because who makes the best alcoholic anonymous counselors? Recovered alcoholics. Alcoholics, that's what I do. No, you gotta be in recovery, right? Who helps people through physical abuse? Who helps people through any type of depression? Who helps people overcome physical ailments? People that have been there and done that. You don't know the pain of man soul until you've walked a thousand miles in their shoes. And sometimes we've got to put their shoes on and recognize, man, I'm sorry. I love you. And I believe in you. And I believe in these things that have happened. They're not you. They don't define you. Stop arguing with the truth of the greatness and the call in your life. You've gone through things for the reason of promotion, not demotion. You're going through things so you can be the powerful <coughs> empower. <coughs> so you can be that one that says, I feel you. I've been there. I've done that. I'm good. And now here I am. When someone knows you've been through it, what are they going to say? Well, how'd you do it? How'd you overcome it? See, the purpose of significance, guys, the reason this is so important is if we get locked in on what we can have, then that's what the world comes back at us with. It's like the story of the gentleman that moves into a new town, and he says, hey, uh, what are people like here? And the guy says back to him, says, well, let me ask you a question. What will people like where you came from? He says, oh, I found them like this and this and this. He goes, I think you'll probably find them about the same way. Because isn't that kind of how it goes? Call it cause and effect. Call it sowing and reaping. Call it law of universal attraction. The fact of the matter is, is what you sow, you're going to get, and what you expect to see. When you change the way you see, the things you see change. And this is a radically important thing. I don't want your successes to go to your head, and I don't want your failures to go to your heart. This is such an important thing, folks, because nobody is getting through this program without a few mistakes. And if you do, boring, no one's going to read your book. No one wants to hear your story because you just got, woo, no. In fact, almost everybody's got the woo, ends up being a disaster because they didn't grow the root, they just got the fruit, and then bam, it breaks because they're not ready. They can't handle it. We all want the the oak tree, but what do we get? The acorn because we got to grow and develop it. That's what creates Calm passion. Calm with passion to suffer. To suffer with, to love on him anyways. So you can move from significance to the final stage. And that's a life of surrender. That's when that peace comes over you. That's when you know the answer to Mark Twain's question, right? Two of the best days of your life. Day you're born, the day you figure out why you were born. You know why you were put here. 
that a brother was born for the moment of adversity. When you go through your, when the fit hits the shan and things don't go so well, you know. You know that somewhere in your future is the promotion, is the opportunity to walk with someone through this exact same season. This is why, folks, I'm begging you to make a commitment to being a healing force in this world, to be part of grace, to be part of acceptance, recognizing that we can have our convictions without being a jerk about it. We can have our belief system and still love a brother that thinks something very, very different and be perfectly okay with that. You don't have to agree with me to know my heart, and I have to agree with you to know your heart. I can't imagine what your stories are like. I can't imagine what you've been through. I hear, I hear people say, well, I kind of know how you feel. You don't know how I feel. Have you ever said that before? Ever heard someone say, hey, I know how you feel? You're like, shut up. You don't know until you've walked in my shoes. And then someone says, well, uh, uh, <clears throat> I kind of do know because I, oh, sh- sorry, my bad. It happens a lot. So I'm asking for you to set a path. Who are you? How do you want to live? What kind of an impact do you want to make with your life? At the end of the day, when we gather, we won't talk about your birth. We won't talk about your death. We will talk about your life. We won't talk about your home. We'll talk about the housing programs you built. We won't talk about how well you dressed. We will talk about how many people you clothed. We won't talk about how well you ate. We'll talk about the feeding programs. We're going to talk about the impact of your life. We're not going to gather and discuss these personal triumphs. We're going to talk about the impact of your triumphs. And I challenge you to dig deep enough to look past what you're trying to accomplish and wrap your life around serving others and impacting their life. Everyone matters. There's a story of a man who came home from Vietnam, very depressed, battled it for years, decided he couldn't battle any longer. He goes to the store, buys the gun. No one loves me. Everybody hates me. You finish it. I'm going to eat some worms. He's depressed. Goes in his bedroom. Takes that gun, and he hears, Daddy, where are you? I need you. Everybody needs everybody. You're not alone. You're not forgotten. We have to dig in, folks, if we're going to make this world a better place. And it is every one of our responsibilities to do our part with those in our personal circle. I'm begging you to join me on this mission to make the world a better place because you care for those. God bless you.